So this is the um, nuclear sub. The uh, large submarine is identical in function to the smaller submarine in terms of its usage. The tridents come with skillful now, so you'll have to get skillful in order to use those. You do not, for any of these submarines, want to put any normal KSP part on them. So if you look into the CFG file for um, something like periscope, you're going to notice that the periscope has the float bypass uh, mod in the module. So add the boat parts module to it, ID float code, and then and then add, set the flag for float bypass to true, and it will not be affected by water. Now the problem is, if you put a stock part on here, stock parts have crazy high buoyancy levels, and that will basically throw the whole flotation of the sub off. The torpedoes that I'm releasing with Skillful will be able to fire from under the water. They will track a straight line, and they will slowly surface to uh, at their design desired uh, altitude. However, you want to give them time to go up. So I think it, from this depth, it would probably take about, l let's just give it a rule of three, uh, 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 one kilometer per hundred meters uh, depth. So if your target is 2.5 kilometers away, you want to be, you want to release the torpedoes at 250 meters below or higher. Now, what you want to do is just make sure that it's not, of course, sticking out of the top of the submarine like this. So we just grab this, pull it down a bit, Try to center it inside the tube as best you can, and as you can still see, it's just sticking out the top like crazy. And move it down just a slight bit more. That might be too low. Uh, something like that. There. Okay. So take that, and then just Alt-click, Alt-click to copy, and put it in here. And if it's just below... Okay. So 9 and 10 will release the, the vertical launched uh, tridents. Now on the quickly on the front, what we want to do is go back to here and use the hard point for ordnance inside here. Now this is kind of important. So what you want to do is you want to place it inside, come inside the bow, place the hard point. Then what you want to do is just simply load load it up and make sure you select the type or sorry the mark 14 propelled torpedo it's important that you use that torpedo okay so once that's loaded it looks it, it looks visually identical to the um, other torpedo but I'll be changing that shortly um, what you want to do is simply place it so that the torpedo is aiming forward and w when it also has to be green so that you can place it. And because we did 9 and 10 for the other ones, we have 8, 7, 6 for the engine controls. Uh, the, let's see here. The, the flotation controls are on um, 5, 4, and the 3, 2 are the buoyancy controls, and 1 is empty. So we're going to hit release for the top tube on uh, number one. Okay, and here we are. Also, the new sub uh, subwater layer is visible on all um, vessels, including Kerbals now. So if a Kerbal goes underwater, you're going to see the sub layer. I've added that with the latest release. When I when I fixed um, uh, boat parts to work with FAR, uh, the submarines were actually exploding on launch. Thanks for the guys who reported that. Um, I I actually uh, fixed the uh, subwater layer to actually work with everything, and that's a, something I had wanted to do in the past anyways. So I didn't really see it as that big of a deal, um, and it did fix the FAR issue. So that's good. So four uh, on the keyboard turns on the pump to flood the tanks. I'm just going to flood this a little bit until I see the nose dipping, of course, I'm going to transfer that to the back. You want most of your floating mass in the center and not so much on the ends. So here I'm also already defeating my, uh, um, my own wisdom. So I'm going to transfer out the remaining of this into the center and I'm going to transfer out most of this from the end to the middle. So most of my float, most of my water ballast is now in the center of the submarine. We only want as much as as is needed to balance the submarines on the ends. So I'm going to turn off the pumps for those, like that. Make them a red uh, crossed out symbol, and then I'm going to continue flooding. 
and you're going to notice that when I flood, you see it's generating it's generating water ballast here in the middle. It is not adding any more water ballast to either end. So again, we only need so much in in the ends as to as to um, create a balance under the water. So what I can do now is actually turn on the engines and start moving forward and use the dive planes to level myself out a little bit. <clears throat> so we can see that we're making out pretty good now. This is actually quite leveled while moving. It is a little tail heavy. So if I take a little bit from here, we can move a little bit to the front and just stop it right away because you don't want to move too much. Then I suggest you just let go. Of, you aim it dead ahead. You let go of the controls. If it still wants to move for, uh, uh, if the bow still wants to climb, you can move in a little bit more, and you're going to see that the bow doesn't want to climb so quickly anymore. So now it's pretty much level. It is a little bit off. What I can do at this point is turn on the auto pitch, and the auto pitch will make sure that it sits absolutely level at this speed. We don't need to get that detailed. We don't need to get that worried about the level of the sub in the water. Okay, so now we can do a full turn, and you're gonna see, if you add up the mass again, 22.73 in the tail, and 5.88 in the the forward compartment, should not exceed or even come close to exceeding the amount of water ballast in the center of the sub. If you do it this way you'll have perfect balance, you'll be able to turn left and right very easily, you'll be able to climb and descend very easily. It becomes beautiful, like very balanced. Now there's a few things of note to, to, to let you know about from about skillful integration. That is, if you have if you have air defense missiles, the heat seeking air defense missiles on the sub, it will not fire them if it's under the water. So if, a, if an enemy aircraft is flying overhead, and if you're flying an enemy aircraft overhead, coming in on the submarine, it will not fire its missiles from underwater. Um, the, the tridents, because they're fired by you as, a, as the player, will start detecting hits after about one to two seconds. So what you want to do is you want to have the sub at least as sh uh, fairly shallow in the water. So when you release the trident, it, um, it, it has enough time to basically, that one to two seconds gets it above the water line, and then it will uh, seek whatever target you have selected. So as you can see, this is just beautiful. I'm going to park the sub. What I can do actually now is just show you the, the, the uh, surfacing. So with these locked out, if we, if we blow the tanks, uh, blow all the ballast out, um, y you will not lose the settings on the bow and the stern. So what we want to do is just get rid of the stuff in the middle, just enough so that we go up. So if we're sitting level in the water and we're not using the dive planes to go up or down, we want to go up. Right now we're actually going down. We can just hit um, 5 and that will reduce the amount of ballast we have only in the center. It keeps these, these variables here, keeps these values. Now you can see we're going up quite well. We can use the, the dive planes then to kick the nose of the submarine higher and go up at a very steep rate. Now you want to level out before you hit the, su the surface of the water. This is our target for the, for the day. Um, okay, let's get some targeting done. Here we are back at the submarine. As you can see, we have our test carrier over there. So what we can do now, keep your target targeted release the weapon you have to keep your you have to stay captain of this ship and keep that target active you can't switch to another target and fire another missile you have to ride you have to ride it out so essentially release then you can reverse your camera and zoom out as long as you stay in command of that vessel you're fine you can watch the missile then go up like I'm doing now and it goes up a, an amount proportionate to how far it has to fly to target. And there's the streak. And hit. Now you can switch over to the other vessel and check for damage if you if you think there could be some damage here. It looks like there may not be anything seriously damaged here. Um, they may have escaped damage this time. So, let's try another one of those release 
then we're going to toggle that closed. As long as we keep that target active, we can do anything else that we want. There it is. And... Well, I didn't hear anything that time, but that doesn't mean it didn't succeed. So after a disastrous crash, um, the submarine had broken apart on impact and uh, most of it has, is resting at the bottom of the ocean, um, well, well below the cutoff level. So you're going to see here all these errors, because that's just stock KSP doesn't like the Kerbal below 600, uh, minus 600 meters. Um, so what you want to do at this point is get your Kerbal above that level. And um, as you can see, the float code allows you to um, run around as the Kerbal, on the bottom of the ocean, um, or you can swim. There we go. Now once you're swimming, use the plus key on the keypad to swim, and use the minus key to walk. See, it does walk underwater, which is silly, but you know, he wa also walks on the ground. So use the plus key to swim. You might need to do a little bit of a jump to get him going. And then with the shift key, you can go up or control to swim down. So sorry, that is the left shift key on your keyboard and the left control key on your keyboard to go up and down. So here we are at 550. The ball disappears, it opens up and you get the regular underwater layer. So now you're in the safe zone. But we still want to get to the surface as quickly as possible, so I'm going to time accelerate this and I'll be right back. So here we are. Um, and if you wanted to swim around inside something, you could do that. If you hit walk, you can walk on things underneath the water as well. So that's kind of cool. Uh, this time I'm not going to use the tridents. I'm going to keep the mass at the back. We're going to turn around and we're going to uh, use some, sub, uh, some torpedoes on that uh, carrier. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this and this. Just to free up some space, I need to add a little bit more um, balancing in the submarine. Um, I, that's one thing I, I should have done before release, but I didn't. So uh, th there's always something that we forget when we do things like this. And that was one of them. So I reverse the engines on the left-hand side, and I give it full power, and I give it full rudder. And as you can see, we are just turning really quick here. Now the submarine needs a little bit more mass at the back, and that's what I mean by we need more ballast capacity at the rear of the submarine, which uh, I will fix. So what we want to do is we want to go IVA. When you're in IVA, this is the, the periscope here inside the sub. If you double click on this window here, you can get this view here, which is perfect for looking at something far away. Now what I suggest is you keep enough of the submarine. Don't zoom in so far you can't see the sub. Keep, keep a little bit like this. You can see the shape of the submarine and you know that this point here is the forward point so if we keep aiming in this beautiful orientation here we can we can then we can therefore assume that anything in that line is going to be hit by some torpedoes if we're lucky now what we want to do is we normally want to hold out for about two kilometers and to play it safe I'm gonna hold out to about 1.8 which is about now with our speed below 20 meters per second when we release the torpedoes the nose of the submarine will come up and we should see the torpedoes underway ahead of us somewhere so if we don't see the torpedoes um, underway, there they go, I think. I think i just seen a glimpse of them right there. Now we're zoomed in quite a bit. Um, torpedoes moving faster than we are, so it should impact there and there. That was a good spread, because we had two impacts, and we're going to slow down in the water here. So that did not put the carrier out of action. We zoom back out and we can see our course is here. We're pulling up alongside of it. Okay, so if I turn this off and if I jump over to the carrier itself. So as you can see, the damage was uh, minor. Um, some heavy listing to 
uh, the ship, but all in all, still capable of performing a mission and landing an aircraft, I would imagine. A little bit, uh, a little bit difficult probably getting it to dock with stock wheels, but that's another story. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope this was more insightful on how to use the submarine and some of the boat parts. I'll get uh, back into some action videos uh, soon. ICE is going to be released, uh, uh, supporting Skillful as well. That's the uh, in-atmosphere engine module that I created. It will also include vehicle engine. So you'll be able to mo build a modular uh, vehicle drive system. And uh, that will also be very rudimentary when it launches, but it will also be improving over time. Talk to you guys later. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks a lot, guys. Good night.